Hi, uh, my name is Ronnie Carter and this is a short little introduction to my trailer that you're about to watch for my 2020 documentary. Um, I hope you enjoy it, it's about 2020 and how it affected everyone's lives on a daily basis and it shows the events of 2020 and yeah, watch the video and you'll get a better look basically of how everyone was affected, especially everyone who went through it as me. Myself as a teenager who went through it, it was quite tough. Um, and I can't even imagine how old people felt for it with not being able to connect with their family and friends if they didn't know how to use social media, which is a big thing now in today's society. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoy it. Leave a like and a comment. Let me know what I did well or bad. Please, I need some criticism. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and go watch the full documentary if you wish. Cheers. People don't really understand it until you actually see it coming at you in a wall of flame. The fire still came at us, even though we were very well prepared. There were over 200 firefighters here from various areas in Australia that were helping us to fight the fires. And people were using blowers to blow back the uh, sticks and the grass and they clear the area. But it didn't make any difference with this fire. It's like uh, fireballs in the air that explode. Cars blowing up before uh, the fire even gets near. Uh, it's um, unprecedented. Global deaths expected to hit 2 million today. Even as countries race to vaccinate their populations, the COVID-19 death toll continues to rise at an alarming rate. New strains of the coronavirus, which scientists believe are more transmissible, have been blamed for the surge in infections. The number of COVID patients is definitely going up. It's heartbreaking. The patients this time are definitely sicker. This is a real life situation. This is serious. We are seeing every day patients dying right in front of us. I don't think that any of us realised just how challenging this wave was going to be. When you have to tell somebody that you think this is the start of their lungs failing and that they're not going to get better, that is really, really heartbreaking. We're doing everything to try and save them. The worst time was four deaths in two hours. It's atrocious. The worst any of us have ever seen. 12 days I've been here. My breath is still not coming there. It's very dangerous to see. The staff here have been really quite amazing. They work long, long hours, but they just keep going. I don't know where they find their energy from. In a video so shocking, we won't show it. George Floyd yelling, I can't breathe more than 20 times under the knee of Officer Derek Chauvin in Minneapolis. Check, the man ain't moved yet, bro. He wasn't resisting. He was being restrained. There was a video of this incident there was no violence or no way somebody could say he somehow deserved it. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! The disturbing nine-minute video opened Pandora's box, unleashing the wrath behind an endless string of footage highlighting a centuries-old issue. Justice for Lamar! Justice for Lamar! Say her name! it negatively but I think it's the same with everyone because it's just like boredom and like every day just feels the same all the time like it's literally you wake up you work you just go home and there's nothing to do yeah. like so I would just say boredom is really the way the, the biggest effect it has but at the same time you just gotta keep going you know so it's just you gotta get on with it <laughs> Oh god, that's funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's made me a better person. <laughs> it's made me, it's made me focus on like having five people in the house together, and we're all like you know living on top of each other. Everything, you know, it's made me understand what a bunch of retards I actually <laughs> live with. Um, you know, that they can't do simple things. You know, and put things back or clear things up or you know. So, so yeah. So in that way, yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's affected me <laughs> negatively, I suppose. But then, you know, having them around all the time and seeing, you know, your kids and all that is, you know, has been has been actually quite quite good, and we kind of get on all right most of the time. I don't think it's affected me as badly as it's affected other people that have been really, especially, 
if they work physically well and you know and they haven't been able to uh, they've got constraints on them anyway and then with the lockdown it's been it must be very very hard for myself mentally no touch wood but I've got another friend she is entirely on her own not the one I ring every day and she uh, I know that she's found it really difficult mentally but then she's got physical problems as well you know and it's all it's like another worry that yeah. That you knit you didn't have before.